Hello, hello. Uh, I've been asked a couple of times to talk about this um, new anti-rape nail polish that everyone's talking about. I have mixed feelings. They're, they're on both sides. I think it's kind of cool and kind of interesting that men created a nail polish, a beauty product that is supposed to be anti-rape. I think people who are fearful of rape deserve to feel empowered by whatever means necessary, whether it be weapons, pepper spray, whistles, or now nail polish. And someone mentioned to me like we should stop perpetuating the myth that most rape is done by strangers when a big scary truth is that rape and sexual assault are usually done from people who know you. And in my experience, even somebody that I knew was capable of putting a rape drug in my drink. Just wondering how that would work. Like in a real life situation. So you see your nail color is different. Now what do you do? <laughs> if you know this person, do you call them out? To be like, look what happened to my nails. That means I know that you drugged me, so what the hell are you doing? It's not always a stranger that you can run away from. This is a person that you may know. And then what do you do? I think it's also interesting how so many anti-rape products or anti-assault products are marketed to women. Nail polish? To detect a date rape drug? What about dudes who get it in their drink? Are dudes supposed to start wearing nail polish too? I don't wear nail polish very often. <laughs> then we have pink pepper spray, pink whistles, pink knives. Pink could be argued to be a color that stands out. So does yellow. Pink um, tends to be marketed as more feminine. So we're feminizing our weapons of protection. I think that it's interesting. I think that it's a little odd that we're always so focused on women protecting themselves and women learning how to behave themselves in order to avoid rape. If she is out in a in a deep V-neck, well, what did you expect? Showing off your goodies like that. If she is walking alone from her job to her car at night. Well, what do you expect? You should never be walking alone. It appears to be that women should be living their lives expecting to be assaulted and expecting to be raped. And if they are not precautious, well, what were we thinking? What were we expecting? I wonder if people know what rape is sometimes and know what sexual assault is sometimes. It's not always like that visual you get on TV that a stranger runs up to you. That is possible. That has happened. But the more common thing has been that it's people that we know attack us. And by attack us, we're not talking about booga 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 out of the bushes and smack you down. It's the guys who get you into a private setting and start being forceful and aggressive. It's the guys who are hanging out with you while you drink and you get a little too drunk and they take advantage. It's the guys who hear, I don't know, and they think that that means try harder. These are the conversations to be having. Should we be having conversations about how to protect women? Of course. Part of that conversation is about teaching men about consent and changing the culture that we are living in right now. And I think it's great that that um, women feel empowered by products like this. Cool. Whatever makes you feel good, awesome. I just think that the conversation needs to broaden up a little and for us to not be scared to talk about consent issues and striving towards a consent culture. That all being said, I do have to get ready for work. As you can see, my hair is a mess, I'm sorry. <laughs>
and I will see you guys eventually. Bye!